Hello beautiful people of God, this is Prophetess Rivers with another word, another message. Today I want to talk about the kingdom of God and good seeds. Because so many times in our life we feel like, well why is it that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing but it feels like if I'm not doing it the right way? Or why does it feel like that bad things happen to good people? Or why does it feel like the people around me that aren't following after Christ, that they're getting blessed just like I'm getting blessed but they're not sacrificing or doing what it is that I'm doing? Well it says in the book of Matthew chapter 13 that the kingdom of God is it's like a farmer's field and that when that farmer goes back into that field he sees that the seed is good but he also sees that there was terror that was grown up with that seed and then the pe his um people he asked they ask him should we go up and should we pull up the bad seeds that are there should we go up and pull up those weeds and he says no and they look at him like if he's crazy and he says that the enemy was the one that brought them there so you must understand that in due season that the enemy will receive the reward that the enemy will do so don't get caught up in why is that these people are getting blessed like I'm doing but they're not doing what I'm doing because the word of God says that the good seed and the bad seed will grow up together until the end time until the return of Jesus so don't make it look like if oh well they're not going to get what's rewarded to them in fact they will get rewarded to them and God is saying that he is leaving them there right next to you so if you're at if you're on your job or if you're in school or wherever you might be and the enemy is right there next to you and you're like wow why is it that this enemy is still right next to me after I'm praying and after I'm fasting or after I'm trying to separate myself from being on this job and then I go to another job and I still have those same enemies that are around me. You must understand that God has placed them there for a reason. Not God, but God said that the enemy has placed them there. It's not that God's not aware of it because God can go in there and God can pull them out. But God says, no, I'm going to leave them right there until the time comes where when it is time for me to reward you, the enemy is going to be rewarded for what he is doing as well. So count it as joy when you see the enemy next to you because it's not like if they're not being overlooked. God sees them and God sees you and God sees that you're a good seed. And in that story in Matthew, it says that the farmer tells them, do not pull them up. Wait until the end time, until the harvest is ready, until the return. So God is saying, I'm going to leave them right there. I'm going to leave them right there until I come back and I will deal with them. So you continue to do what it is that you need to do. You continue to let God use you the way that he wants to use you. You continue to be all that you can be and let your light shine. Now, the question of the week is, how do I feel about every time that you do something in your life, one of your close friends or just one of your friends is like, well, if it was me, I would do this. Or if that was my husband, I would do this. Or I think you should do this. Or I think you should do that. Bottom line, everything that you're doing, they want to compete with it or they got something to say about it. Tell them to stay in their own lane. If it was their marriage, then they could talk. Unless you're getting, unless you're counseling them, there's a difference when you're giving godly counsel or somebody's coming to you asking you to butt into their relationship. But if a person is always sitting up there saying, "Well, if it was me, I would do this," or "If it was me, boo boo," stay in your own lane because it's less traffic. Don't get caught up in competing with your friend or comparing with your friend because they don't know what it has to take. Like so many people sit up there and be like, oh, I wish I had a marriage like you, Minister Rivers, you and your husband or the way your husband just spoils you or this or that. They don't know what me and my husband had to go through to get to where we're at right now. I'm not saying that we had, you know, this hard knock life marriage, but there was a lot of fasting and praying and stuff that me and my husband had to denounce for our marriage to be the way that it is. So when people sit up there and they say, oh, I wish I had this or that. Do you really? Because do you know what it costs for me and my husband's marriage should be the way that it is? Do you know that I had to really submit to my husband? And that was hard for me to submit to a man. It was hard. But then I thank God for me being able to submit to my husband. People, oh, well, you you just listen to every, No, 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 no. Stay in your own lane because you know I can't see. And I might hit you because stay in your own lane. So don't get caught up in... When people sit up there and say this or that, you know, just smile at your friends and be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, because they don't know. And don't compare your marriage or your relationship to the next person because you don't know what they're doing. Anything can look different on the surface, but when you scrape it, there's probably a lot of stuff going on in that marriage or in that relationship that you don't know about. Everything that God shows you ain't meant for everybody to see. Remember, I love you, God loves you, and all that you do, give God the honor, glory, and praise. To God be the glory.